Welcome back. We are so glad that you are continuing to join us on this ride as we journey through Scripture and explore these different stories of these powerful women, uh, powerless, powerful women. Absolutely. <laughs> powerless, powerful women in the Old Testament. And today we are going to be looking at three women, actually, mm -hmm. uh, a mother and two daughters. We're going to be looking at Moses' mother, uh, Pharaoh's daughter, and we're also going to be looking at Moses' sister and Miriam. Mm -hmm. And I, I like to call them desperate times, desperate measures. Absolutely. So Sherry, talk to us. Uh, tell us about these women. Okay. Um, if, you were, uh, had, if you were at the lesson last week, we talked about the midwives, and they were two of the heroes who paved the way for Moses, that, that great figure in the Hebrew Bible. And so um, today we're going to look at a very unlikely alliance between two women from a different world and also at a very clever young woman. Now, I don't, um, I don't think you have to be female to appreciate the situation that Moses' mother found herself in. She already had two children, Aaron and Miriam. And when uh, the midwives said that they didn't, couldn't get there in time to um, kill the male Hebrew babies, the Pharaoh changed his new command that everyone in Egypt, when they found a Hebrew male baby, they were to throw that baby into the Nile. Such a horrific thing even to imagine. So there Moses' mother is pregnant with an unborn child. And that entire pregnancy, she does not know whether her child is going to live or die. It depends on whether he's a boy or a girl. So when Moses was born, and his name means to draw out, when Moses was born, um, she hid Moses for three months. But she knew the day was coming when she could hide him no longer. Now, the scripture doesn't tell us, but I suspect she studied the Nile River with its reed-filled uh, uh, banks and also the fast currents and the crocodiles as well. And so she came up with a plan that was very risky, but she was a woman with no power and she had to save her child. So she wove a basket. She uh, made it watertight with pitch. She put her son in the basket and she placed it in the reeds by the side of the Nile River. This kept it from being carried down the river on the currents. And then she instructed her only daughter to watch over the basket and over her brother. And so from the moment this child is born, this woman is coming up with a plan to save her baby. Enter Pharaoh's daughter. Yeah, but before that, they need to know about the fact oh, that we I prepared, forgot. yes, we prepared this Bible study sitting by water. We did. We, we just kind of wanted to immerse ourselves <laughs> in the experience. <laughs> no, we weren't just hanging out at the lake or anything. But anyway, we were yeah. we were working on it, and the wind came and blew the, the notes that we had been putting together on Moses mm -hmm. into the water, and we had to fish it out. So we want you to know that this Bible story, this Bible study like Moses was drawn out of the water. Yeah, it makes it even more special. It, it does. <laughs> and, 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 of course, that's what Pharaoh's daughter did. She drew him out of the water. And, and of course, you know, if you think about it, I mean, you think she's the Pharaoh's daughter, that she probably had a whole lot of power. But she really was very dependent upon her father and mm -hmm. all the men in her life, whoever was going to marry her in the future, assuming she wasn't married yet. Um, she had to depend on them, and she was at their mercy. Absolutely. Um, and goodness knows, with all those babies being thrown in the water, she must have seen a lot of dead babies floating down the Nile. But yet, here comes this baby. Mm -hmm. And she knows it's, Scripture says she knows he's Hebrew, and of course, why else, who else could he be, right? Absolutely. And, and so she takes this baby, and she risks everything in order to care for this baby. That's astonishing when you think about it. It is astonishing. She didn't have to do it. I mean, mm -hmm. we, we talked last week about if the midwives were Egyptian and not Hebrews, that they were among the righteous Gentiles. Yes. Uh, and, and here she is doing the same thing. I mean, she's risking all kinds of power as well as her life to mm -hmm. do it. Yeah, it's a remarkable story. It is. But there's one more hero in our story, Moses' older sister, Miriam. Uh, do you remember what she said to Pharaoh's daughter? Do you want me to go, <clears throat> excuse me, and find one of the Hebrew women to nurse your child? Come on. How smart is that? Um, she, of course, she had her own mother in mind, and that meant 
for at least a while, Moses, Moses would lay in his mother's arms again. She was a very clever young girl, but her story is not over. Uh, we see her again in Scripture in the crossing of the Red Sea when Moses is leading the people to freedom. She is called the prophet Miriam, and she leads the Hebrew women in singing and dancing and playing drums. And many scholars believe that Miriam's victory song is one of the oldest pieces of Scripture in the entire Bible. Miriam is also the first woman ever to be given the name of prophet. And in one of those really extraordinary, connecting, divine moments, Miriam sings a song of victory. But centuries later, Mary, the mother of Jesus, whose name also means Miriam in Hebrew, she also sings a song of victory. Two women separated by centuries, but yet connected by their faithfulness and by their uh, willingness to take a bold risk. And this is another recurring theme that you find in the Bible, and you'll hear in some of our other stories, mm -hmm. and it's also in other stories within the Old Testament, where the woman sings a victory song or a celebration song mm -hmm. or a song of praise, and it is echoed later, most often somehow in the Magnificat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but we'll, we'll see that yet again. Yeah, actually multiple times we'll multiple see that again. Multiple times again. again. Uh, but and, and, oh, and, you know, you were talking last week about how Pharaoh is not named, and the midwives mm -hmm. are. In this case, too, we know Mary. We know the names of Moses' mothers, and of the Pharaoh's daughter, and of Miriam, and they are named, and the Pharaoh is not. I know. Once again, it's just perfect. What can I say? What can we say? <laughs> but uh, I'd really hope this story of three women will will speak into your heart because I think all of us can identify very strongly with at least one of these characters, maybe all of these characters. And I think they really are our spiritual uh, mothers, our spiritual sisters as well. And and what a role model they are to us all. And once again, they were women who did what had to be done. Because that's what women have always done. <laughs>